Ahora vamos con otro speaker, con otro ponente, que es Brian Egan, es desarrollador indie y autor del Flutter Cookbook. Así que un aplauso, un aplauso para Brian Egan. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Brian Egan, and I'm a, a web and Android engineer. And uh, so I have a, bad, a bit of a background with companies like Zappos in the United States, where I worked mostly on their websites. And then I moved over to Berlin, where I was working on their web app, uh, and working on SoundCloud's web app, and then Android uh, apps as well. And about two years ago, I was, uh, I, I, like, I like Android, I'm not here to dig on it, but I really started feeling like I kind of missed some of the best things from the web, like really fast iteration cycles. And at the same time, I happened to run into this article about a new technology called Flutter. And Flutter uh, is sort of a new way to build cross-platform applications. Uh, and so I really liked the, the idea of building mobile apps. And uh, so I thought Flutter was a really interesting new take on this. And so what it does is it allows you to build really high fidelity, really fast mobile apps that you can deploy to iOS and Android. Uh, and so if we kind of take a step back, I think a lot of folks, you know, if you're a native developer, you might think like, oh gosh, cross-platform, uh, maybe not the best thing. But I think if we took a look as engineers at sort of the, the trade-offs that we get with each type of uh, development. So if we think about traditional native development, right, you get really, really high quality apps overall. Uh, and uh, generally, you get like really smooth uh, animations, and the apps load very quickly. Uh, but there's some really interesting downsides, I think. And these are downsides that I felt firsthand working on large, consumer-facing apps. And these downsides, especially if you're a small team, the first one is that you need to fund two application teams, right? So you need a team for iOS, you need a team for Android, and you have to pay all these folks. And especially for smaller businesses, or businesses that are just getting going, uh, this can be a real, uh, real bottleneck, actually. The other interesting thing, uh, and this is something, once again, we experienced firsthand at SoundCloud, is that sometimes our apps would actually look and behave differently than one another. And worse, actually, is sometimes uh, the Android app was just a bit ahead of the iOS app. And so our users actually were missing out on functionality on the iOS app that the Android users had access to. And so it's sort of interesting in this way because you actually might uh, have apps that like, are starting to, to, to diverge a bit in the functionality and the, the look that they provide. And so if we sort of compare that to third-party or cross-platform development traditionally, uh, the really exciting thing about these platforms is that they really allow for fast iteration cycles. So I'm thinking about things like React Native or PhoneGap or Xamarin. Uh, especially React Native, it's got hot reload, which just allows you to save your changes, and you can see these things instantaneously. And the other cool thing about these types of platforms is they generally allow you to deploy iOS and Android apps. So you're, you're working on a single code base working, rather than working on two code bases, which, like I said, can have, a, have some interesting problems. Now, the traditional problem with these platforms is that you generally, or in some cases, can get poor performance. So especially for things like PhoneGap, which is a, really a web-based technology, uh, but also for things like uh, React Native, we actually have a React, had a React Native at SoundCloud, a uh, React Native app at SoundCloud, and we actually ran into some really interesting performance challenges there. Uh, the other thing is you might get non-native look and feel at times. And so I think React Native does a good job of this, um, but there are, especially if you think about things like PhoneGap, it might not be quite ideal, actually, in some cases. And so Flutter, I thought, was really interesting because their whole goal is to actually combine the best parts of traditional app development, where you get really high-fidelity animations, really fast applications, really fast startup times, uh, along with really fast iteration cycles. And you can generally deploy the same kind of code base to both iOS and Android. And so how does Flutter do this, really? And I think it kind of comes down to three things. The first one is that it allows you to create really expressive designs that work well for the platform you're building for. The other thing is, as I said, they really enable high-velocity development. And so as a developer, this is something that was really crucial for me. As I said, I kind of went from web to Android. And uh, frankly, I really missed the iteration speed that you got when working on web projects when I was working with Android. And the other interesting thing is the way it works is that it makes Flutter actually really fast. So if we dig into these things, right, so we want expressive designs. Uh, and so I think Flutter has this really interesting, the team themselves, they've got a really interesting sort of uh, idea, which is that they, you should never have to say no to your designer. Uh, are there other like UI engineers, like web engineers in here that have had a conversation with your designer and you're like, uh, sorry, I just, I just can't do that or I just can't make that happen? 
I'm, uh, I'm not sure if there are those of you out there, but this is like a conversation we used to have a lot, unfortunately, uh, when I was working especially with Android. And so Flutter has this uh, new way to build UIs that makes it much easier to say yes to your designer. Uh, and, and actually, I think overall, this is, this is something they're really achieving. Uh, the other interesting thing that the Flutter team noticed, and that this is actually something that really reflected my experience working uh, at SoundCloud, is that they looked at the top apps in the Google Play Store and the uh, iOS App Store, and they actually even looked at the apps that were winning design awards. And to be honest with you, they weren't that different. So these are all screenshots of different apps uh, that are taken on iOS and Android devices. And I think you can see they look really similar in a lot of ways. And so what, the, what they realized is that, and this is something we were doing at SoundCloud as well, is that, hey, a lot of the time we're actually building almost the exact same user interface twice over. And that actually leads to just a lot of extra work, but it also means that you can't move as quickly as a team. And it also means that if you really want to express your own brand identity for your company and to give your users a really unique experience, uh, maybe actually working with a framework uh, like Flutter might be a really good idea. So the other cool thing about Flutter is that, you know, we want our apps to feel native in the environment they're on, right? So uh, when you're working on an iOS phone or using an iOS phone, you want to have like bouncy animations uh, when you're scrolling. Uh, you want to have the right navigation structures. And you also, of course, want the right fonts. And so those, those differ between platforms, right? And Flutter uh, sort of allows you to express your brand identity, express the designs that your designers are coming up with, but it's still meant to feel at home in each environment. And the interesting thing also, I think, is that uh, the way it's architected, it's almost actually like a 2D game engine. And so you can actually not only create really beautiful designs, but you can actually even create uh, advanced uh, like 2D effects. Like on the left-hand side, you can see a particle simulator. And on the right-hand side, you can actually see a full 2D game engine. And this would work across iOS and Android just out of the box. And so the way its uh, model works, and the reason I'm showing this is that it's actually extremely flexible and allows you to not only create really kind of cool UIs, but you can actually create really advanced effects that also work out of the box. Now with high velocity development, now, like I said, this is one thing that I really, really missed uh, moving from web to Android. Uh, like on web, you can make changes and then Webpack will like recompile and you can do an automatic reload, right? Uh, on Android, especially we had an app with like 300, 400,000 lines of code, and it would take you know, anywhere from 20 seconds to a couple of minutes to do incremental recompiles. And so if you're just changing some, some text or you're changing some padding and you're just trying to make your, your app to come to life, it could be really painful. Uh, and so Flutter is really interesting because it has this concept of hot reload, uh, which is uh, similar and really just borrowed from, I think, React Native and frankly, even older technologies. And so it's really cool because you can just make changes in your editor, hit save, and you just see it reflected immediately on the device. And this is like a game changer, I think, for mobile development. Uh, and I think like, this is a really big deal for uh, iOS developers as well, because I think they have similar challenges with compilation time. Now, it's interesting because this is using, Flutter is uh, developed in a language that you might not have heard of or worked with, which is a language called Dart. Uh, but it's, it's a kind of an interesting choice because Dart is actually what allows the, the team to actually make really fast production apps, and we'll talk about how that works in a second. And the thing about Dart is it also can work in what's like called a JIT or just-in-time compiled mode. And so this is how uh, your app will actually run when you're developing it. It will actually like run a little Dart server, or Dart VM, excuse me, and you just basically hit save, it'll send the code changes to the Dart VM, and it'll recompile instantaneously. Now, the, the nice thing about Dart is that it's actually, uh, I would call it like sort of a boring language, but a very familiar language. So if you've worked with JavaScript, Java, Swift, Kotlin, these types of languages, I think you'll actually see that Dart is actually really easy to work with. And it's really interesting, actually. I think one of the other things that I didn't mention on this slide is that the Dart team and the Flutter team have actually been doing a lot of usability studies on the Flutter API and on working with Dart. And they found that actually Dart developers can get started really quickly with Dart. And so I think that's actually another way that they're enabling high velocity development. Uh, so I think there was a presentation on developer experience just a couple, uh, couple talks ago. And it's really interesting to me that the, the Flutter team is actually doing usability tests with developers to see how their, uh, their APIs work. And they're improving and changing their APIs in response to those tests. 
Now, uh, finally, as far as high velocity development goes, uh, you don't have to learn new tools, right? If you know Android Studio or Xcode or VS Code, uh, you can even use Emacs. Like I, that's what like the tech lead for the company uh, for Flutter actually uses. He's like an old school Emacs user, um, and he's just like he uses it. Um, and so the whole point of Flutter is that they really try to come to you. Uh, and so they ask developers what tools they're using, and they're trying to build really good tooling around these things. And so uh, especially Android Studio and VS Code, you've got a really nice development suite out of the box. Uh, so I think as far as, uh, you know, I can sit here and talk about that, but I thought it was really interesting. And so I went looking for, looking for blog posts and seeing like, what kind of experience people had. And so one of the apps uh, that launched first with Flutter was an app called Hamilton. And this is a musical in the US uh, based on the, the president, Alexander Hamilton. And the, the development team that built this is a development team called Posse. And they started writing an app. And within three months, they were able to publish an app to the iOS and Android app stores uh, with just a couple of different developers. Uh, which is pretty pretty incredible, actually. Uh, if you've you know done a traditional native mobile development, and this this feature this app is actually like has a lot of features in it as well. You can do lottery systems and uh, interact with the camera and all sorts of stuff. Uh, another really interesting fact, I thought, uh, and these are some developers I met uh, earlier in the year from AppTree, and they were able to have about 95% code reuse between iOS and Android. And interestingly, because Dart also compiles for the web, you can use uh, tools like Angular Dart. Uh, you can actually get about 60% of code reuse amongst your Flutter and web apps as well. And because they were writing so much of their code in a single language, they actually found that they didn't need to spend as much time QAing. Uh, and so this is a really interesting fact. And they not only save developer time, but if you've worked in an, uh, an environment where you have a lot of QA, the fact that they were able to save so much QA time is a big deal, actually. So you know we uh, we're developers, uh, a lot of us, and we think about like the classic mantra like don't repeat yourself, and so I think that this is uh, really an interesting case for mobile development because we're essentially repeating ourselves twice by building two different apps, and so this is really cool because I think with Flutter you can build new features or improve existing features rather than working on just building the same thing twice. Now the other cool thing about Flutter is that it is really fast actually. So. How is it fast? Well, uh, in development mode, as I said, you have this just-in-time compiler. But when you're ready to ship your app to production, the Flutter tools will actually take your Dart code and compile it down to native ARM or x86 code. So you're actually running code on the hardware compiled for the hardware itself. So this means that you have really fast startup times. If you've worked with React Native, sometimes you might have noticed there's a little bit of like a boot up time. And the other cool thing is that you get extremely smooth animations and other things like that. Uh, the other nice thing is that you can actually have, uh, you can actually do some really nice platform integrations as well. So you can work with video players, or you can work with maps, or you can work with the camera. Uh, and I just I do have to say a quick caveat. Uh, I am an engineer after all. Uh, the maps integration is developing. Uh, it's getting better. It's not perfect just yet. So if you're thinking about developing a maps heavy application, Flutter might not be the best case for you. Um, and also, actually, Fernando asked me about persistence. That's another story. I think that's developing. It's OK, but it's another thing that's developing. So uh, yeah, Flutter is in beta, or actually just turned into release candidate. So there are a few rough edges still. Uh, but I imagine these things will be improved over time. And, and finally, one thing that I really like is the, the community around Flutter, actually. I think it's a really inclusive and really warm community. Um, and so overall, uh, there's a growing ecosystem of packages, and people are really willing to just jump in and help out uh, on different channels, such as like you can join the Gitter channel, and there's just like a bunch of people in there asking and helping to answer questions. Um, overall, I think like the actual tools that the community is building are getting better and better, um, and we're starting to see the platform mature a little bit. Even though it's really young, uh, we're starting to see like a really nice, really warm and welcoming community uh, sort of evolve. So. If you're interested in getting started with Flutter, I think there's uh, sort of three different ways you could approach this. Uh, the first is just to like download the tools and build up an app. You know, just start from scratch. Uh, that's like definitely a cool way to go. Uh, the other interesting approach, and this is actually the approach we took with our React Native app at SoundCloud. So the main SoundCloud app is is full native, but we have another app that's uh, for creators. Um, and that app is actually originally written for Android, but we didn't find or have enough iOS developers to write uh, an iOS version. And so the attack we took at SoundCloud was to actually write the iOS version with React Native. And you could take the exact same approach here. 
So you could write, uh, so say you have uh, an Android app and you need an iOS version, you could write that with Flutter. And then eventually, once the feature set is in place and once it's up to speed, you can actually even consider replacing your original Android app so that you only have to maintain one code base. Uh, another option is you could try to embed Flutter into a, a, a normal app, like say you have a large native app already or a large native Android and iOS app. Um, I think it's interesting, I think that's a possibility, but I think we've seen maybe from the community lately, like Airbnb and Udacity have published blog posts about this exact thing and the sort of the challenges of integrating native code bases with cross-platform tech. Uh, it's a possibility, but maybe, maybe not the best one. But overall, I think the first two options are actually really compelling and really interesting. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, I hope you uh, find Flutter interesting, and if you want to chat about it more, please, please come and uh, talk to me during the, the nerd working. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with me, uh, feel free to hit me up on, Bri uh, on Twitter or GitHub. I'm at Brian Egan. Uh, and if you want to get started with Flutter, uh, I would say just head to flutter.io. There's really good documentation about how to get started with it, how to download it, uh, and, and get developing your apps uh, pretty quickly. So thank you so much.